Hello, this is Ibrahim Nassar with Ozin Engineering. In this demo, we will be using ANSYS SI Wave to perform power integrity analysis based on DCIR simulation. Here is the um, the project open with the SI Wave tool. So here is a board file that got imported here, and you can import basically different type of files by going to File Import, and these are the different uh, uh, file types that can be imported to SI Wave. After you import the file, you can go to the layer stack up, verify the stack up here and the materials or modify them. You can also see the nets that are identified in your model, whether they are single ended, if you have an extended nets where are nets basically connected with lumped components, you can also define them here by using the auto identify or manually add them. You can also define differential nets and the power ground plant will be automatically loaded here uh, based on the built-in definitions. But if some is not included, you can manually edit the, those nets to be considered as power ground nets or not. You can also from here uh, check which layer you want to be viewed here, planes, traces, pads, vias, components. Uh, so different ways basically to modify the view of the file. All right, so now the DC, uh, the power integrity analysis with SI Wave can be done based on different solvers. So if we go to simulation, there are different type of solvers that we can use. But for power integrity, there's, it can be done using the SYZ solver, which basically uh, you set up ports and then you calculate the S parameter and Z parameter. So you can look at the, um, the impedance of the power plane and identify regions with high impedance or low impedance. Uh, you can also do the re resonant mode, use the mo resonant mode solver, where basically you also set up ports and then look, look at the resonant modes to identify if there are issues in the power plane. And the third one, which we will be using today, is the DCIR solver, um, uh, which is here. Uh, that we will use basically to calculate voltages and currents and be able to plot them in the power plane and view them and identify uh, areas of concern. Okay, uh, so SI Wave basically has uh, uh, different wizards for automating different types of simulations. And we can access that from here for some type of analysis, but for the DCIR analysis, we will access it from here from the SI Wave workflow wizard here. So if we click here on this icon, this will open. And as you see here, we can start by here by bringing the files, verify the stack up and everything. And now to set up a DCIR drop analysis, we can click here to configure it. Um, and here you see the list of all the nets and the ones in red are basically the power planes. So we can select any of those nets to do the analysis for simplicity. Let's just select, for example, this one. And here we see like there's different two different uh, reference designator here for this part number and this part number. And they, so here, uh, let me go back here to show you where we want to basically uh, sitting the sit the simulation on. So we will be using basically this component, uh, U1. And this component, if we cannot find them, we can hide the planes here to see the components up to this U2, the this component. So we basically put the voltage source here and a current source here and uh, calculate the currents and the voltages in these planes. OK, so we go back here to the SI wizard. So if we click DCIR analysis, so we select basically which net we want to do the analysis on so let's select the one v0 and here in the one z v0 we want to identify a voltage source as we mentioned here it's at this kind of component here and then we will basically define a current sink um, to do the analysis so where we want to place the voltage source uh, we basically want to place the voltage source in u2 so we can here click on source prob change that to voltage source and on this one we want to put here a current pro uh, sink so current source we can obviously here change the magnitude of this for example we can use like a 10 amp and that's it now we want to 
do click on configure the simulation. So if we click on configure the simulation, the simulation basically setup will be configured. And basically what will happen is ports will be and pin groups at these components will be created to do the simulation. So, so this is done when we click on this step. Now next, basically we can validate if we have any issues based on these the criteria, if we have DC short, disjoint nets, for example, you can also modify the, some of these. And we then click OK. And we do the validation. So now we see the results, so there's no errors. So we already configured the simulation by applying ping groups and excitations to the design. Uh, we did the validation, so now we're ready to simulate. We here can see also the RLC components that's connected basically on these nets, and we can click here to hide them. So now basically it's all the simulation setup is ready, so we can just click on simulate. Here in this window we set up uh, the DC simulation. Um, so here you see the we have to select the ideal ground, zero volt, and we can modify these defaults. Uh, generally, SI wave requires a global uh, zero volt reference location. The zero volt reference is automatically applied to the negative pen of uh, the voltage source. And this creates a reference point for the voltage plots and the results. So this is fine here, set up fine. Uh, if we click on other solver options, here we can modify the accuracy of the simulation from balance to optimum speed and optimum accuracy. Uh, we can modify the circuit element contact radius. If we go to the DC advanced tab, also there are different settings that can control the simulation and can be modified. If we go to the multiprocessing tab, we can as well modify the number of cores used for this simulation and the type of the HPC license. Then we click OK, and now uh, the simulation is ready to start, so we can click on Launch. Okay, so after the simulation is done, we can see the analysis listed here and the results. And if you perform different type of analysis, you can, or they will be all be listed here. So now let's view the current and voltage. So we can right click on, um, let's make fit view here. So by hitting Control D to fit all the view. All right, so now we can right click on this and select plot current and voltages. So we can select which NIS we want to make the plot on. So let's select the one V0. And let's, for example, select to plot the voltage here. If you don't see that, that means we have some view issue. To do that, we can go to uh, View. And in here, we can click here to display the color scale. And on here, we can select to display the surface plot. OK, so now we see the voltage here. And if we select change the different layers, so let's plot it in NR2, as you see here. So we see the voltage plot on that uh, on that layer. Similarly, we can select uh, and check this and select the surface, uh, the current density. And as you see, it also shows up as a vector where it goes, uh, where the, the vector is pointing to. You can tell the direction also of the current. You can select multiple, of course, planes. Okay, you can as well change the scale. To change the scale, you can double click here on the scale and change it basically to a user defined values. We can as well uh, view the current VS. So if we again go to again to plot current voltages. Uh, so if you uncheck this and select the IV, which is the current via. And let's select it, for example, on NR2 as well. And by the way, we can also hide all these things. So we just see basically the 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 the, the current and the voltage. So here we see um, the the current via and shows up also the direction as an X and O if it's coming in or coming out. And of course, with the uh, with the with the scale on. We can as well um, do different type of reporting. So we can right click here and say display element data. 
And if we go to the VS, for example, so you see we can see a list of all the VS and see the position of it, the current, and the, if it's passing or failing, depending on the criteria defined, with the resistance and different values. And you can also do this by pointing on, uh, on, on a specific VS so you can see the uh, values here and read them. And as I mentioned, O and X represent basically the current magnitude between uh, the layers, O as to a layer toward the top, and X current to a layer away from the top of the stack up. Okay, we can as well uh, right click here and look at uh, calculate the loop resistance. And here we can expand this window and see the loop resistance values. And we can as well export some data. So if we right click here again and select export report, and we can provide like a location and we export uh, the report here to any specified location. You can as well uh, export the power tree. And we can hit OK here. And this is the power tree of the model. Okay, that's all for this demo, and thank you for watching.